Water is the most important resource in our lives. We find it everywhere, from natural sources to bottles and taps. Drinking a glass of fresh water when we are thirsty is one of the best sensations that exist. But beware, not all the water we drink comes from springs. In countries like the United States, Mexico, and Chile, in regions where the sun is strong and water is scarce, huge amounts of seawater are transformed into drinking water that we can all drink. But how is it possible that every day millions of liters of salt water are transformed into clean and safe drinking water? Well, today we will travel to California, home to one of the largest desalination plants in the United States, where every day more than 190 million liters of salt water are transformed into drinking water. So get ready, because we are about to reveal how the ocean becomes the water you drink every day. Let's start. Step number one, extraction of seawater. Salt water from the sea is one of the most abundant resources on the planet. But did you know that it is not so easy to turn it into something we can drink? The first step to transform the ocean into drinking water is to capture it, and this is a truly impressive process. Desalination plants are strategically located near the coast, where access to water is direct and efficient. To capture the water, huge underwater pipes are used that extend to the bottom of the sea, sucking thousands of liters of salt water directly from the ocean. These pipes are connected to powerful pump systems that help transport the water through long conduits to the desalination plant, where the purification process begins. These pipes transport more than 7,000 liters of water every day. Can you imagine what this means? It is enough to fill 1,400 bottles of 5 liters, almost the equivalent of what 7,000 people would drink during a whole day. In places like the United Arab Emirates, 90% of drinking water comes from this desalination process. It is amazing how the ocean becomes the main source of water in such arid places. When all the water arrives at the plant, the real process begins. The first thing will be to filter it. Let's see it. Step number two, initial filtering. Now that thousands of liters of water have arrived at the plant, it is time to prepare it for what is to come. Before the water passes through the complex purification processes, the first thing that is done is to eliminate the largest impurities. Imagine for a moment that the water you drink contains algae, sand, and even small fish. It would be a rather unpleasant experience, right? Well, this first filtering step precisely prevents that from happening. The water passes through coarse filters, gigantic devices that do the dirty work. These filters, usually made of metal mesh or porous materials, act as a safety net that ensures that only the cleanest water advances to the next stages of the process. Without this step, the entire system could collapse due to an obstruction of large particles. While the water continues its way through the filters, the plant workers have to stay alert. It is not just an automatic process, but it requires constant monitoring. Quality control is key from the beginning. If something is not right, the water could become contaminated and the entire process could be compromised. With the water already filtered from large impurities, it is ready for the next big step, desalination. What comes next is where the magic really begins, transforming it from salt water to drinking water. It is time to make that salt disappear. Step number three, desalination by reverse osmosis. With the water now clean of large impurities, the most important moment arrives, eliminating the salt. But how is this done? Here, one of the most impressive technologies comes into play, reverse osmosis. This process is simpler than it seems. In this step, a special filter is used that acts as a kind of door that only allows clean water to pass through. When the water flows towards this filter, the pure water passes through it, but the salt, minerals, and other contaminants are trapped and cannot continue their journey. This filter works thanks to its extremely fine structure, which allows only water molecules to pass through it, blocking unwanted substances. It is like a super tight net that filters everything we don't want, leaving only clean water. For everything to work correctly, the water is subjected to high pressure to force its passage through the membrane since salt and contaminants are resistant to this filtration. This technology is so effective that it can eliminate up to 99% of the salt present in the water, leaving the water almost pure. In this process, saline water or concentrate is also separated, 
which is the water that remains after desalination, loaded with salt and other contaminants. This water is not wasted, but is generally returned to the sea, but the process must be controlled to avoid damaging the ecosystem. With the water already free of salt, but not yet completely ready for consumption, the next step arrives, ensuring that it is completely clean and safe to drink. Step number four, elimination of impurities and disinfection. Well, we already have water without salt, but it is not yet completely ready to drink. There may still be impurities or microorganisms that we do not want in the water. So it is time to make sure that the water is completely clean and safe for consumption. Imagine for a moment that this process is not done correctly, and all the water we consume contains a virus. A single error could put an entire population at risk. For this reason, to eliminate any type of bacteria, virus, or remaining pathogens, disinfection processes are used. One of the most common methods is the use of ultraviolet UV radiation. This process is very effective, since UV light damages the DNA of microorganisms, preventing them from, from multiplying. It is as if they were artificial sun rays that eliminate the germs from the water without the need to add chemical products. In some plants, fluorine is also used to ensure that no bacteria or other microorganisms remain. This process is similar to the one done in swimming pools, but in controlled doses, so that the water is disinfected without altering its taste. Once the water is completely disinfected, it is ready to move on to the next step, ensuring that the water is not only drinkable, but also healthy for those who consume it. But before all this, we must adjust the minerals so that the water is really suitable for drinking. Let's see it. Step number five, mineral adjustment. At this point, we are very close to having drinking water ready to drink. The desalinated water has gone through an exhaustive purification process, but it still lacks a crucial detail, minerals. Desalinated water can be too pure, and that means it lacks some essential minerals that we need, such as calcium, magnesium, and potassium, which are important for our health and for the taste of the water. Without these minerals, the water can feel empty and even tasteless. It's like when the water feels too flat or bland without these minerals. So how are these minerals added? Large dosing machines are responsible for adding precise amounts of minerals to the water. The process is called mineralization, and its goal is to balance the composition of the water, making it more similar to what we normally drink from the tap or from natural sources. The doses are controlled with such precision that only the necessary minerals are added so that the water is not only drinkable, but also tasty and suitable for long-term consumption. Mineralized water is not only good for our health, but in some parts of the world, the water we drink contains natural minerals that have spent thousands of years in the natural filtration process. Once the minerals have been added, the water is ready to be distributed. But first, something very important is missing. Let's see it. Step number six, quality control and storage. Once the water has gone through all the purification and mineralization processes, it is time to ensure that everything is perfect. This is the critical moment, quality control. Imagine that after the entire process, you drink a glass of water contaminated by an error in this phase. For this reason, constant tests are carried out, such as analyzing water samples to verify that there are no bacteria, heavy metals, or other contaminants. In addition, parameters such as pH, conductivity, and mineralization are measured to ensure that the water is perfect for consumption. With the water approved and ready to be used, it is stored in large tanks where it is kept protected until it is distributed. These tanks are designed to keep the water in the best conditions, isolated from any external factor that may alter it. It is like a safe for water, where its quality is ensured until the last moment. Some of these tanks are underground. This not only keeps the water at a constant temperature, but also protects it from exposure to light, which could affect its freshness. Now that the water has passed all the controls and is perfectly stored, it is time for it to reach its final destination. Get ready to discover how that now ready water is distributed and reaches you directly. Step number seven, distribution and final delivery. With the water treated and approved, it is time to deliver it. This step ensures that the water reaches directly to the homes and places that depend on it. When the water leaves the storage tanks, it is distributed through an extensive network of underground pipes that connect the treatment plants with homes, hospitals, factories, and other places. The pipes can travel thousands of kilometers, crossing cities and towns to ensure that every home has access to clean water. 
Did you know that some cities have pipe networks so large that they cross mountains and deserts just to bring water to their inhabitants? It is impressive to think of the infrastructure that keeps everything running, ensuring that every tap is kept supplied. When the water reaches homes, it is distributed through local pipes. In some areas, the water passes through final monitoring stations to ensure that it always reaches the taps in the best possible conditions. And there you have it, the incredible journey of water from the oceans and rivers to the taps in your home. Every drop you use has gone through a complex and meticulous process of purification, storage, and distribution. The next time you open the tap, remember, the ocean is not that far away. Only a little technology separates it from your glass. Finally, tell me, are you one of those who prefer bottled water or do you trust more in tap water? Leave your answer in the comments. And if this video has surprised you, don't forget to like it and subscribe to continue learning about more fascinating manufacturing processes.